7.14 p.m. at with the conclusion of one guessing game show Hey Otani's chosen franchise as he begins his career in the United States and other commences. How many of you, from the start of the process, had the Los Angeles Angels as the victors? Not many, I'm sure. Now we begin the task of evaluating Otani's expectations in his first and, yes, subsequent years in the U.S., defining his fantasy value. He's the most prominent potential 2-way player we've seen in this game in decades, but we've seen a variety of outcomes from previous players making the leap from Japan to MLB. After weeks of wooing, persuading Shohei Otani to sign might be the easy part. Now the Angels need to figure out how to sustain his success as a 2-way star. Otani's success as both a starting pitcher and right fielder during a five-year career in the Nippon Professional Baseball Organization fuels fantasy interest in him as both hitter and pitcher. To the question of eligibility I've heard your many questions about it ESPN will announce how he'll be used in our game on a later date. In terms of Otani's greater fantasy utility, expect it to come on the pitching side, where his role should be more assured and his skills more likely to translate across leagues. After all, Otani's career 2.52 ERA, 1.08 whip and 28.5% strikeout and 9.1% walk rates in 85 career games in NPB pop off the page, especially considering he pitched at a high level for three seasons, plus the fraction of 2017 for which he was healthy. His numbers compare favorably to other Japanese-born pitchers who made the transition from NPB to the major leagues, with one notable exception he's one of the youngest players in history to make the jump. Assuming Otani makes his first big league start in April, he'll be the fifth youngest Japanese-born pitcher to make a start in the majors, behind Masanori Murakami, Junichi Tozawa, Max Suzuki and Tomooka. League translations from overseas can be tricky, due in part to the limited sample sizes of players making such moves and to the difficulty adjusting to different roles, ballparks, roles and even equipment. The baseball itself is slightly smaller in NPB. Depending on whom you ask, you might hear it competitively compared to as high as the major leagues, to a quadruply a level between AAA and the majors, down to AAA ball. I lean toward the middle comparison, especially considering how many pitchers have made near-immediate, effective transitions. One way to roughly quantify it is to extract the results of the 14 most prominent Japanese-born pitchers with sizable enough samples to come to the U.S. simply using era nothing to scientific here are their track records player U.S. Debut era final 3 Japan years or a Japan final year era US year 1 U Darvish 20,121.643.633.90 Kai Gawa 20,073.503.566.25 Hideki Irabu 19,972.681.447.09 Kazu Hisa Ishii 20,023.482.424.27 Hisashi Iwakuma 20,122.873.5 3.16 Kenshin Kawakami 20,092.811.273.86 Hiroki Kuroda 20,082.86.2.13.373 Kenta Maeda 20,162.267.473.48 Daisuke Matsuzaka 20,072.402.404.40 Hideo Nomo 19,953.292.092.54 Masahiro Tanaka 20,141.441.512.77 Koji Uehara 20,093.092.304.05 Sumiyoshi Wada 20,142.633.393.25 Masato Yoshi 19,984.732.973.93 It reveals a roughly 1.1 run increase in era in the first year in the U.S. compared with their final three-year average in Japan. To expand to other fantasy-relevant categories, their whip collectively rose roughly 0.15 in the first year, strikeout rate dropped a little less than 2% and walk rate rose about a percent and a half. Applying a similar adjustment to Otani, the result is roughly a 3.25 era, 1.10 whip and 29% strikeout rate, numbers that would be outstanding and effectively a top 10 fantasy starting pitcher if he gets enough starts think 28+. However, considering that Otani was limited to just five starts for the Nippon Ham Fighters in 2017 due to ankle and hamstring injuries, has to deal with the league adjustment and will be doing so while attempting to do something that few players have attempted in the expansion era, tempered expectations are wise. I think an innings cap around 150 frames is possible, and I'd worry that his walk rate might spike to 10%, threatening his whip ballooning toward 1.2 or worse.
You're buying Otani for his strikeout potential, and an average of 10.5 per 9 innings ISNT an unrealistic expectation. On the high end, his 2018 numbers could resemble those of Robbie Ray in 2017, a season that earned Ray the number 9 starting pitching spot on our player radar. On the low end, they might not be unlike those of Trevor Bauer, whose 2017 stats placed him 36th. It's for that reason that I'm slotting him as my number 24 starter for now, in the same general range as Aaron Nola 22nd and Jose Barrios 26th. As for Otani's bat, his .286.358.500 career rates in Japan are sure to capture your attention, especially in comparison to the awful numbers of most U.S. pitchers. There's little doubting his left-handed pop, and you can expect him to contribute more in terms of home runs than batting average initially, but 69.5% contact and 27.0% strikeout rates suggest a lengthier adjustment on that side of the game. He's probably going to be a streaky hitter, and he's also landing in a ballpark Angel Stadium that was 25th in terms of home run factors for lefties in 2017 and 24th over the past five years combined. A final note on Otani's likely streakiness how he is used by the Angels might have a major say on his first year fantasy impact with the bat. They're one of the American League teams with the least space for him at his natural positions, as their outfield is set between Justin Upton, Mike Trout and Cole Calhoun and the designated hitter slot is occupied by Albert Pujols, who might not be able to handle first base on even a semi-regular basis at this stage of his career. If Otani gets only two or three lineup starts per week, and one is the game he's starting, he might be wildly inconsistent and a liability in head-to-head -head leagues. It's an answer we might not get until spring training. I'd guess he accrues about 250 plate appearances of .245.315.430 numbers, which could result in 810 home runs. Most fantasy owners are going to look at those numbers and react as if they're insultingly low, but I remind that we're always quick to assume the best-case scenarios with experiments such as this. Be realistic.